Former President Donald Trump responding to a new allegation published in Michael Wolff's new book that says the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley was openly concerned that the 45th president would stage a coup to keep the White House. Donald Trump responded with his own statement saying this, quote, despite massive voter fraud and irregularities during the 2020 presidential election scam that we are now seeing play out in very big and important states, I never threatened or spoke about to anyone a coup of our government. So ridiculous. Sorry to inform you, but an election is my form of coup. And if I were going to do a coup, one of the last people I would want to do it with is General Mark Milley. Joining us now to discuss is Jason Miller, senior advisor to the 45th president, standing by. Jason, I got to get your reaction to hearing the concerns initially reported uh, from General Mark Milley about Donald Trump staging a coup. What are your thoughts? Emma, good morning and thank you for having me. First of all, this is complete nonsense from General Milley. I think that if you take a look at the comments that we're seeing and the way that he's put himself out there in the in this type of partisan context, it is clear that General Milley is effectively the Robert Mueller of the military. What I mean by that is time to separate the man from the uniform here. If any of General Milley's subordinates had gone and done something like this, he would have them court-martialed and thrown out of the military immediately. It's clear that what General Milley is doing is trying to position himself, whether it be for a CNN or MSNBC contract in the future, or maybe he wants to uh, be the head of some woke university. But again, th there are hundreds of thousands of men and women who show up to work every day to defend our country when they put on the uniform, put their lives on the line. They check their politics at the door and they do what's right for the country. For General Milley to be doing this and to outright be undercutting the chain of command is a disgrace. He should be fired as the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I think he should be thrown on the scrap heap of history. He's a bad decision maker. You believe you believe he should be fired for these comments that he made reportedly? Absolutely. And, and just to be clear on this, uh, I, I don't think it's so much of a reportedly. He is in every book. In fact, the New York Times book review said that the Phil Rucker Carol Lennig book may as well be retitled Mr. Milley Goes to Washington. That is not someone who's active duty military. That is not someone who's the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Emma, there's another concern I have when we think about this in kind of the broader, uh, more global perspective. Think about the young men and women who are coming up through the military right now who see the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who are uh, looking, they see this political activity, they see his commentary, they're now going to think this is okay. They're going to think it's okay to undercut the chain of command and to attack the President of the United States like this. And also, Milley was making a lot of these comments while President Trump was still the President of the United States, not afterwards. And so I think he needs to be held accountable for this. And again, I think he's a disgrace. I want to switch gears uh, slightly, talking to you about what the former president is up to right now. We know he recently met with GOP leader Kevin McCarthy. They sat down and talked in New Jersey at Bedminster. Jason, what do you think they were discussing? Uh, what message might the former president relay to the current GOP leader? Well, a couple of things. Number one, President Trump wants to make sure that we win back the majority in the House in 2022. And Kevin McCarthy realizes he's a very astute political uh, figure. He realizes he needs President Trump engaged. He needs those Trump voters. There's a reason they call them Trump voters, because they show up when President Trump is on the ballot. But Kevin McCarthy needs those Trump voters to show up in 2022 if Republicans are to take the House back. So that's at the top of the list. The other thing, too, is uh, McCarthy is probably the best at the Washington politics politicians who's figured out how to work with President Trump. Sometimes there's a little bit of, there might be a love tap back and forth, or they might not see it eye to eye on everything. But McCarthy's very smart. He knows how to work with President Trump. And this needs to be a partnership going into the midterms if we're going to knock off Nancy Pelosi. All right, let's talk about the current administration. Just yesterday, the White House sharing their plan to combat misinformation about COVID on social media. Here's Jen Psaki. Listen. We've increased uh, disinformation research and tracking uh, within the Surgeon General's office. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. We're helping get trusted content out there. Again, Jason, so the White House press secretary uh, talking about the White House's own involvement in what can and cannot be shared on social media here. I want to ask you how you think this admission might relate to the former president's ongoing lawsuit against these social media giants right now. 
Well, I think this just became exhibit A. And again, folks, this is how it all starts. This is how your freedoms erode. I mean, somewhere George or Orwell is watching this and saying, this is exactly what I called. Uh, this is how we become a fascist state where free speech is only free if the Silicon Valley tech oligarchs or Joe Biden or whoever's the administration or even big media. We talk about the wokesters at CNN and MSDNC and other places like that. If they think that your speech is in line with what they believe. This is scary. If President Trump had said something like this, we're flagging certain posts for, and we're going to have them taken down or have people deplatformed. You wonder why I went and helped start a brand new social media platform, Getter, uh, where you won't be deplatformed for your political views and you won't be censored or we can actually embrace free speech. It's exactly for acts like this. Uh, this, this is shocking. The fact that this isn't on the front page of every paper in the country today blows my mind. All right, Jason Miller joining us, senior advisor to the 45th president. Jason, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Emma. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.